Zach picked up this Clayton Machine Works automatic shifter for the 700 R4. This particular shifter is a linkage driven, not a cable driven shifter. I don't know if that's good or bad. We're gonna try it out. Zach really likes the look. It's a looks like a four speed shifter. It's a Z gate, Z gate shifter. And this mounting, it, there's four tabs that you can adjust where you could actually recess it into the floor. You can cut a bigger hole and set the uh, shifter below floor level, or you can mount it right to the top of the floor. Uh, in this case, because of the room, we had to pre-look and kind of see how we were gonna do this. There's not a lot of room between the floor and the transmission on this particular setup. So we kind of figured it's gonna be better just to put it above the floor, because there was only less, about an inch. Hardly get my hand under there to get the bolts on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that gives us more room for linkage. This arm actually drops down through the floor and I don't know for sure how far it's gonna stick below the floor to have enough room to go low profile uh, recessing the shifter through the floor. So this way we should have plenty of room above the shifter with this. And it's a pretty good setup. The instructions are really good instructions so far. This arm actually fits over this lever on the side and it just it bolts down really easy it's got an allen head bolt it just screws in tightens it up and you can kind of see how it's going to swing below the floor uh, there's a few little questions as we're going along we're going to have to answer the instructions don't talk about it and it just looks very easy to install and we just kind of wanted to have you follow along as we do this oh so this shifter part number is gs 700 t and it's a gate shifter floor mount and you can get these for all the various transmissions for chevy ford dodge probably a lot more I don't yeah know any i got this one specifically for gm four speed transmissions i got it a little bit cheaper because it didn't come with the lever and the ball and so i got it for around 225 and then the lever and the ball i got on amazon the lever was around 30 and then the ball was around 15. With the ones on jigs are usually upwards of 50, which you're probably paying for more quality. Well, but it looks like a pretty good quality. Yeah, it's not horrible. Yeah, it looks nice. It's a nice setup. And that's the nice thing about this shifter is you're not stuck with what it would come with. There's You can get a wide variety of different yeah. shifters. You can get straight shifters or bent clear over like if you're putting in an old pickup or something, you got a, a wide variety of shifters you can put it. And I think you can even mount like a Hearst sh uh, shifter arm. It looks like the same bolt pattern. Uh, so you got a wide variety. So yeah. this shifter did not come with a shifter boot, a floor boot. Right. So that's something Zach will have to pick up. And I imagine it'll just be something like a Hearst shifter boot. It says yeah. most four speed Hearst shifters, the boot will fit that. So you can so, get any of them. So that's the only thing he's gonna have left to pick up as far as I can tell. This does have a neutral safety switch, detent switch here on the side that we'll have to wire in. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I think there's instructions on that. But basically, if you already have an automatic setup with a neutral safety switch, you just need to tie into that and just put a jumper wire from the actual switch or the actual plug down to this. So we're gonna go install this and just kind of follow along with this. Okay. All right, Zach, so what'd you do here? So I sat here, put the shifter down in park. So that way, as I'm sitting back and I put it in park, I know I can reach it. Did you make room vroom noises while you're doing this? There is a little bit of spit on the windshield. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, then I took a marker and marked on the carpet where the corners of these little lever, or not lever, the little brackets are. And then I took a knife, cut the carpet out. Let me come in closer. And then I put it back down, made sure it was where I wanted it again, marked the holes, took the shifter out, drilled the holes, made sure all the bolts fit in, and they do. And then we also marked where we think that that lever that hooks on right here should go. It looks like it should in part be here 
and then in first should be right around here somewhere. So it shouldn't take that much out of the floor, keep it structural. So we're actually going to cut that out a little smaller than we need instead of making a huge hole. We'll just cut that out a little smaller and, and put the arm in there and see if that's going to work and then we'll just trim it out. That way we don't get too big a hole because <laughs> yeah. it'd be pretty easy to cut out too much at one time. I saw a video of a guy showing how these shift and he had it cut <clears throat> he had it cut pretty much from the back of the bracket to the front of the bracket and as he was going through it you could kind of see the floor flexing where that big hole was. Right. So I want to try to keep it least amount as possible. Yeah that's good. Okay so we'll get that cut out and uh, try it out. Yeah. So that groove, or that, what do you call that? Notch? Hole? Hole? Slot. This, ah, I like it. So this slot that Zach just cut out, it lines up, it appears perfectly with these two outer mounting holes with those tabs in the, with those tabs in the, that position, they line up right with that. So that made, makes it a little easier. There's not actually a template for installing this. So, just be aware that that does line right up. And this one here will come back quite a ways, but like Zach pointed out earlier, this one here does not need to go all the way up. This is in first right now. And that first, first guess was really good guess on that. And then Park will be clear in the back. It looks like Park might actually uh, with it mounted to the top of the floor, the park might actually come back and touch the uh, floor all the way back here, which it might be all right. We won't know until we get it all together. So we'll find that out shortly. Okay, the shifter. Zach has it all mounted up. I think he's just getting a generic uh, boot like for a her shifter. And that should cover all that. Got the transmission lever on there, and that's going to buzz on over here to this arm for the shifter itself, the linkage. Now there's a rod that goes from here all the way over to that, and it's pretty much a straight shot. And it should be lined up pretty good with that arm right there on the transmission. This one here points straight up about a one o'clock position. And then we've got a, that rod will go from there to there. And I think we're a pretty straight shot. Well, there, Zach went and installed the rod from the shifter arm up here to the transmission arm. The uh, rod in the instructions um, says that you may have to bend that to clear to clear part of the transmission. I know right here he had to make a bend just to get around this stuff here. Now these linkage also have heim joints on the ends, which is really nice. They're really smooth action and they have they really help with the uh, different angles but you can mount these on either side depending on what you your needs are on both ends down here oops either end so there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of uh, adjustments that could be made in installing that rod uh, you definitely have to uh, shorten it for your needs, you take measurements. The instructions lay it all out really nice. Oh, one of the things to mention, these screws here where they, you tighten up to lock these in place, you really gotta get them tight and I'd recommend using some Loctite and cinching them babies down as tight as you can get them. Cause there, it took quite a bit of oomph for Zach to get these tight enough where this wasn't trying to, trying to wiggle here. Cause there's not a real solid 
mount that way. And a guy could, if you really wanted to get after it, you could probably weld these into place, get them where you want them, bolt them down tight, weld them. Then you won't have any movement that way. Um, that was probably the only, the only two real issues with this shifter were these, getting these tight enough. And they may work loose. That's why I would recommend using some Loctite. If they work loose, then this whole thing's gonna get to wiggling back and forth. It's pretty solid. Cause you actually are, you know, you're not just going forward and backwards, you're wiggling, jogging this thing back and forth quite a bit. So get these tight as you can. And I would Loctite them. As we pointed out before, you definitely wanna take some note on how big of a slot you wanna cut out here. When you got it mounted the way we have it here, uh, when it comes all the way back into park, it actually comes up and was touching that. But I don't know if you can't see very well down in here, but the transmission's right there. It's just there's no clearance underneath the floor in this car. Some rigs might have a lot of clearance. A pickup, you might have, oh, I don't know, three or four inches maybe in some pickups, plus the humps, like a a C10, the humps are really wide. You could have mounted it and had a lot of room underneath. It probably would work really good in something like that. But it's a really nice shifter. Feels really good. Uh, the gear throws are really close together. You don't have a whole lot from, from first all the way up into park. Yeah, that's park. You know, it's not too far of a throw. It's pretty short. Seems like a really good unit. Zach has ordered a boot for this. I think he's just getting a generic uh, boot like for a Hurst shifter. And that should cover all that.